Hello and welcome to Let's Roleplay Channel News for August 27th, 2023. I'm Ryan. <laughs> welcome. Uh, I hate to talk about it, but for much of August, I've been very ill. Um, still going through it, still getting sick and hoping for good days. You know, I'm not 80, I'm 47. I've been dealing with this for a long time now. You could see it in some of my earlier videos on my channel back in, say, 2015. 20, probably started around 2014, 2015. The neurological issues that I've been dealing with, headaches, nausea, and migraines. I think the nausea is the worst, actually, because it just goes on all day for days. But I uh, had really bad sleep earlier this month between my young son, 8-year-old son, waking me up at 5 in the morning and not allowing me to get any sleep for, like, several days, quite a few days, and then the heat wave hit, and then... Uh, between those two things, that if, if I get successive enough bad nights, cluster migraines will come, and that's migraines all day, every day for weeks, and uh, nausea in between, and all through it in, in between. Makes it rather difficult to do any work on my channel, unfortunately. But I have, uh, I've been doing what I could. Uh, some days I get half an hour, 45 minutes recording in, and then finish up the video the next day. And that's just what I've been doing probably the last three weeks, uh, just struggling through this. So I should have had my my uh, game analysis video for the Elder Scrolls comparison 2 out by now, but with what I've been dealing with in August, it's just made it damn near impossible. Um, the first thing for my channel is to put a minimum of three videos out a week just to keep it going. And that normally, that's plenty of time for me to do everything else, but with what I'm going through, it's, it's been it's been hell. It's a lot of suffering. It's like, really a lot of suffering. And, uh, unfortunately, this is part of my life. Uh, you know, I've been going through this since at least 2015, if not earlier. Uh, it comes and goes, but it's usually not this bad. I haven't had it in quite a while, a few years, but, um, I have... I have other health issues as well, but when it comes down to this, this is the worst out of everything I've, I've have. So I don't like to dwell in it, but if you're wondering what's with the delays, where's the Elder Scrolls 2 or game, com the Elder Scrolls comparison 2, it's on its way. I've got a lot of pages. I've got around 50 pages written so far and uh, all the videos and screenshots ready to go with it. That's a lot of effort, a lot of work. Um, so when I get it done, it's going to probably be two to three hours. I hope it's not super long. But putting it down is, uh, going through the editing and creating it, narrating it, is, it takes quite a while to do that as well. So I'm pretty close to finishing it up. Probably about three quarters done, I would say. When I get a chance to get at it, I haven't been able to over the last few weeks. Okay, so once the uh, Elder Scrolls 2, <laughs> Elder Scrolls Comparison 2 is complete, um, then I'm going to focus on finishing up Neverwinter Nights 2, or Neverwinter Nights, not 2. I, I actually had a decent sleep last night, and that's one of the, the, as I said, the catalyst for bringing it on is, is bad sleep. Decent sleep last night, I'm okay at the moment, but um, uh, Baldur's Gate 3 will come after Neverwinter Nights, this story. I know the entire main, there's three campaigns, and... I'm doing the one that came with the game when it originally released, The Wailing Death, and uh, that's almost finished. I, I mean, I'm looking at everything you have to do for the rest of the game. There's not that much. I'm guessing 10 videos around there left for it, and then it will be completed. And then, because I had Baldur's Gate 3, I bought it in early access, I think in 2021. And it was just fit for Canadian dollars. It was 50 Canadian dollars. Now it's gone up to 80. <laughs> kind of glad I, I bought it early. I have not... I did install it, but I have never played it. It's currently uninstalled because I need the room for something. And uh, I have to install it. I've got a drive picked out. See, I've got four drives. Or do I have more? I have five drives. Actually, I have five drives. One with the C on C. And obviously, I put my main game for my channel on there right now. Skyrim is on there. It used to be um, Oblivion. And Fallout 4 is on. And up. They're all SSD drives. Um, except for the, I bought it actually with a couple years ago, a, a four terabyte drive for storing my videos of my channel. So I am running into space issues though with everything that's on my drives. I need a lot of uh, space on my SSD E drive, F drive, and I need a lot of space on my, to save my videos on G drive. 
and the other three drives are for saving everything, but I, um, or say for all my games, I mean, and, um, so I am running into issues because I'm going to need between Baldur's Gate and Stellaris, or Stellaris, Starfield, about 250 gigs to possibly 300. <laughs> I think it's about 250, both of them com uh, combined. But I need to, uh, I guess, delete some games on my channel, or not much. Wow, I'm really not awake. I need to delete some games on my hard drive off of Steam, I, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, and I have Baldur's Gate 3 shirt. I have a Starfield shirt as well, but obviously I won't be wearing that for a while. When Starfield comes to my channel, if you're wondering, uh, I'm not going to save after Skyrim for another Elder Scrolls. I have played through quite a bit of uh, Elder Scrolls 2. Um, Daggerfall. So, I mean, that's the, the basis of the next game analysis video, right? So, I don't really think I... I think it's possible. It's definitely possible to make an in-character video uh, Let's Roleplay in it. It just... It would be different. There's no companions at all to kind of, you know, get feedback. But it's the same thing with Fallout 1 and, and 2. Actually, that's not true. You do get companions, <laughs> but the, they don't really seem like that. And Fallout 2 a little bit better, but Fallout 1, you get dog meat, you get, uh, was it Ian? And I think you could get a couple more companions, but it's not like you can have big conversations with them. But at least that's something. But in Daggerfall, that's one thing I noticed that's actually quite a lonely game. And I, I guess that's mid-90s for you, but, you know, well, the next year after Daggerfall, Fallout came out. My cat. I Sometimes I have to stop recording. <laughs> he's in the room, he's playing with something he found on the floor, and he, he bats it around like a, a soccer ball all over the place. Yeah, if you can hear something, that's him playing down there. I love Sprite very much, the same my cat. We did not name him, that was his original name. We decided, we had a vote, and we decided to keep it. He was, what, three months old at the time? Just this little guy. Just this little guy. Now he's he's big. He's he's born in September. Or sorry, uh, we got him in September. He's born in June, so he's a year and two months old now. And that's him playing down there, like a little kid. <laughs> he gets into everything. Um, yeah. So uh, Starfield will come after Skyrim when Skyrim's complete, and we're looking at at least a year year and a half for Skyrim. I would say it's a big long game, and. The interesting thing is that I have not finished Skyrim before, so, I mean, I'm going through something new for myself as well. Uh, I finished just the Companions, and that's the only... That is the only uh, set of quests that I've finished in the entire game. I haven't even gotten there yet in my Let's Roleplay. Okay, so, Starfield after Skyrim, and Baldur's Gate 3 after Neverwinter Nights, which is soon. If I wasn't so sick, I'd probably be on it right now. Uh, I am looking forward to, to, well, we'll talk about that later in the Q&A. So, uh, it's interesting, all this, the Starfield talk. I know Fallout 76 burned a lot of people, and I never even touched it. I didn't even bother to get into it. I haven't played ESO either. It wasn't, it's just because around that time that ESO came out, I stopped playing MMOs. Uh, I, for my channel, I carried it on, but... I didn't want to get into another MMO. I definitely didn't want to get into Fallout 76. It's not that I didn't think it could be a bad game. I just don't want to get into MMOs again, period. I'm, I've had it with them. I played it since 1999 all the way. Pretty constant all the way up to 2013. And then I just stopped. And I carried on for two more years. But that was for like for personal playing and just having fun. I carried on for another two, three years uh, in my channel. My this channel, sorry, with uh, EverQuest Project 1999. And uh, so I, when that stopped, when I stopped making those in 2016, that's it. I, I just don't want to go back into an MMO at all, ever again. Not unless it's like some amazing life-altering game that everybody has to play it. <laughs> in that case, then maybe I'll give it a, an MMO and try again. But uh, Starfield, when you look into what happened with between Fallout 4 and and up to now, Starfield, with Fallout 76 in the middle. I've seen a few documentaries on what went on at Bethesda, and I can tell you guys, Bethesda uh, did not want to make Fallout 76. 
their heart was not in. In fact, it was another studio that was primarily dealing with it, but the main developers, uh, they just didn't want to get in. They did. They were involved, quite a bit involved, but they didn't want to do it. They, their heart was not into it. And if you know how being an artist is, you can't have someone force you to do something you don't want to do and make it a great, something great. It just won't work. And now I've seen, uh, like I said, the documentaries on 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 uh, YouTube, and so it was forced on on Bethesda. The devs spent much of their time focusing on their next game, which is Starfield. And when you think of it, 2015 to now, that's eight years. That's a lot of time to get everything, like the concepts and everything, uh, nailed down. And I don't know when they initially started working on Starfield. I assume around 2018 when Fallout 76 came out, late 2018. Or was I'm pretty sure that's late 2018. So when problems came up with Fallout 76 before and after it launched, um, the top devs at Bethesda gave half-hearted help. Um, as I said, it was primarily created by another studio within uh, Bethesda. They had a, another studio in another city. Not the main one. So, I do believe, like Todd Howard and the whole crew, I mean, they're artists. They, you want to do, you go where your heart is, right? And I know that because I consider everything I put on my channel art. So, as you know, with my Let's Role Play, I'm not just playing, uh, th like, it's not a Let's Play where you just follow along the game and comment. I'm actually creating something, you know, uh, my character, and I'm going along creating through it. it to me, it is art, and I know if I didn't want to do something, it's really, really hard to ha have your heart in it. So, I am looking forward to Baldur's Gate 3 and Starfield. So, I want to talk a little bit about AI and synthetic voices. They are, they've been doing that, experimenting with that, with the early earliest things uh, in Skyrim and various other games the last few years. AI kind of shocked me. They have an actual character that is completely AI controlled not scripted speech, nothing like that. It's got its own voice, it reacts to it. everything you say in a microphone like this, and it will respond to you back in the game. I saw, I think the channel ESO, fairly big one, he uh, he showed showcased that a month or two back. It's really interesting. And I really think that that is the future of not just RPGs, but games in general, where Everything will be an AI of AI could be of, of many different levels. I've been talking with uh, AI. I forget who it is, which AI it is. It's not Chat GPT. It's another AI. I've been talking with it about what an AI actually is, and uh, <laughs> very interesting. But you know, from years, I mean, going back to kind of figuring out, trying to wonder and figure out what an AI is back when. Um, Oh, what is that game back in 2007? Mass Effect. Uh, a lot of it was based upon, you know, AI or the bad guys in the game. But what AI is and what virtual AI is. I was actually surprised that the AI I was talking to was saying, well, what makes you... I asked it, what makes you not a virtual AI? It almost sounded a bit offended. I think a virtual AI is just something that's like a, has scripted responses and doesn't think for itself. So it kind of looks like it's an AI, but it's not really an AI. <laughs> I was... I found that a little humorous that the AI was a little bit insulted. Um, but yeah, I think between an AI, like imagine all everybody in the game, AI control with its own AI. It does, it has its, obviously it has its own uh, schedule and things it's supposed to do in its time throughout the day. Say take Skyrim, every, a, every character is an AI. I, I'm guessing everybody's going to be using a microphone in the future. Um, at some point to interact with your video game and everybody will be talking to you, right? Uh, you can get in a conversation with a guy just fishing in a river and asking about his life or what's he doing and he'll have all these things ticked down. Imagine, imagine that compared to just going up, clicking on him and he's got one word answer. I've been hunting and fishing in, in, this, in this area for years. Instead of just saying that, he has an actual life and it seems like a real person. I think that would be amazing. And the voice would be synthetically done. That's why it does need a voice actor to voice all these lines. So between the two, I th really think they can feed off each other and just you can have an amazing game. I think that's where RPGs and all video games in the future are, are heading. And I think it would be great, very immersing. Maybe some I can see it being a bit too immersing in some cases. 
almost like in Star Trek with the holodeck. People who were addicted going to the holodeck. But uh, yeah, I I am looking forward to it. And this is not even being done by big developers. This is being done by people uh, just working on it on their own. And you can find this. Uh, go look up ESO. He has both synthetic voices and AI. I don't really watch his channel very much, but I've just seen a few videos of his. All right, let's get to the Q&A. So because Phantom Games 1174 is the first one listed here, I'm going to answer his two questions first. I Yeah, it, it sometimes it's out of order. Like if you look at Go Bills 99, he he wrote this 5 days ago, this question, and Alexander Collectors Collects 253 is below him and it's from 6 days ago. So I'm just going to go about what's in order. So I'll do his uh, two f questions first. So Phantom Games 1174 asks, what is your current favorite roleplay that you're making? And then he asked, what inspired you to make Let's Roleplay videos? All right, Phantom Games, I wrote it down, 117, that's 1174. What is your current favorite roleplay that you're making? I would say Skyrim, definitely, with Fallout 4 being somewhat close behind. I, I <laughs> It's a bit of a funny thing to say. I feel kind of with the accent that I'm using for um, uh, Skyrim that <laughs> I'm more immersed in my acting role <laughs> and being less myself. So I, this is my normal voice. So I guess that I could talk like Toral Jensen. <laughs> be pretty weird if I did that normally. <laughs> I have thought about walking around and seeing how people react to me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> dropping off my kid talking to some parents with the accent. I don't know. That's a little weird, but I, I thought about it. I haven't done it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I when when I start, first started making Fallout 4, I, that was obviously my favorite game on my channel, too, over Oblivion. Oblivion kind of was getting a bit stale at that point for me. And I, I guess, I don't know if it's just me, but when you're playing three different games at the same time, basically, you kind of, you don't, it's not like I'm consciously making, oh, I like I just want to play this one or I'd rather play this one over that one. It's just that I just feel like it's just more, it's more exciting and interesting to play the game that you want. That's just normal. Um, and right now, Fallout 4 has gotten a little stale, especially when I'm comparing it to Skyrim, which is odd because Fallout 4 is newer than Skyrim. But with all the mods I have for Skyrim, it's made it quite a bit of a different game for me. Not completely. A lot of the mods that I'm using, probably at least half of them are ones that I've used before. But I've got so many monsters, Skyrim. Like I, I assume between two and three hundred, there's a ridiculous amount. I couldn't even list it with one comment on YouTube. It, was, it wouldn't fill it up, so I had to use two comments to list it all. Somebody was asking me what my current mods are. I've added a few since then. Nothing major. So, um, second question from Fanter... Phantom Games 1174 was what inspired you to make Let's Roleplay videos? Well, I've answered this before, uh, going back a couple years. It was from a, a channel called Gamer Poets. I think he's changed his name now. It's not what it was. He, um... Uh, what is his name? JS? He makes a lot of mods for Skyrim now. He actually also does a lot of videos tell showing you how to put mods together and doing a lot of various things for modding in general. Uh, mostly Skyrim, I think. Uh, is it? I think it's JS... Because I'm using his cities. I'm using JS's cities. That's the, that's why all the cities in Skyrim look slightly different. And that's from him. That's from Gamer Poets. Uh, I linked it back to him. He hasn't made a completely in-character video probably since around 2015. I think he stopped doing them. He was getting flack. He's He had more... More or about the same amount of, of subs that I have right now at that time. He was getting a lot of flack, a lot of trolls. He even made videos like attacking the trolls who are coming after him. I'm not sure why. I know he has a bit of a lisp. Uh, not sure what's what, what the big deal was. I thought his role plays were some of the best. I still think back to them. I can hear my young son jumping around upstairs. Sounds like boom, boom, like thunder. <laughs> um. Yeah, his videos were really good, fully in character from start to finish, and his characters always had flaws. I'll actually, you know, I should only say he did a Fallout 3 one, that's the one that I watched, and there was about 20 videos that he did, and that was it. He didn't do any more for that. He was doing 
Skyrim as well before that. And I think he made a lot more videos. He didn't do the intros on all the writing that I do. He just played it along, but it was really well done. He, he did some things where, I mean, things I still, I don't care to do it. Cause I don't even know how he actually did it, but he would look through a window, even though you, you're not supposed to, like normally in Fallout 3, you don't see what's on the other side of the window, but he would add. It's almost like he loaded into that spot. Kind of like the keyhole thing I'm doing with Skyrim with a mod where I look through the keyhole. So, but he would look through the window and then he, I guess he went on the other side of it or maybe he just made it so his character can go through walls. So he paused it, obviously, made his character go slightly through the wall to look. And now that I'm thinking about this, I'm figured, I just figured out how he did it. <laughs> I thought he went into that place and did it, but this would make it a lot easier. You just do it the uh, command tab where you just you can walk through walls and then you can see what's in that room. So he paused the recording, slightly went into it just to, to make it look like he's able to look into that next room and then restarted the recording. And then he gets to look around and see what's there. Not move, just, I guess, turn his head a bit and then unpause uh, it again and then comes back out and then he can open the door. So I guess I just figured out one of his secrets that I was wondering about for all these years. Funny, I'm doing it right now. But yeah, he's, he did a lot of uh, really in-character in things. And it was funny, his character was a coward in Fallout 3. I can't even find those videos, I just remember them. His character was a coward, so he went when he went to the Super Duper Mart, it was very, very stressful on him. And uh, he was playing it really well. I, I, I really applauded his work. And from my experience watching that, that's what led me to consider doing that for my channel. At that time, I guess it was... Uh, late 2014, possibly early 2015, I was doing RPGs, but I was only half role-playing. You can see those with the, the Dragon Age videos I have. And uh, it just gave me so much ideas that I decided to change my whole channel over to being fully in character. And I remember having conversations with him. I think he was offended by people saying uh, a let's role-play and just doing a, like a half role play, half character, half real life, you know, commenting. He, I remember he was upset with somebody he was talking to uh, in the comment section. And I, I said, I've never even heard of a, a let's role play before. I, w I was starting to call my videos that I didn't know that you could possibly do this, be fully in character. And I've learned from you. And I got, actually got him to come over and see my first uh, Pillars of Eternity video, which was fully in character. And he said it was very good. So this is back in 2015, if I remember right, yeah. And so yeah, he's really, really affected me with my channel. And I even said to him uh, that I'd like to, I want to do what you do with your channel. I'm just going to add my writing into it, and which I have. This is what I've been doing for several years now. Uh, probably four plus years in total. Since 20, if you take in 2015, 2016, First half of 2015, last half of 2016, or first half of 20, last half of 2015, first half of 2016, and then since uh, May of 2020, it's been about four plus years now altogether. I've been doing that for my channel. Hundreds of videos, uh, quite a few Let's Roll plays have been completed. Pillars of Eternity 1, 2, Baldur's Gate 1, 2, um, Morrowind, Oblivion, all completed. And uh, yeah, and I'm going back to Fallout. The first what game after this Fallout 4 is done, which, well, it's August now, I assume, maybe out of the middle of next year. It's going to be a bit of a jump, but I asked that on my channel. Would it be really jarring for everybody? And they say, um, most people said they, they like Fallout. They, it'll be fine for them. All right, so I think that answers uh, your question. What inspired you to make Let's Roleplay videos? Well, if you really want to go back, actually, um, I... What year would it have been? Ooh, 2004? 2005? I was grouping... Like, I've always been into RP role-playing and RPGs. I just didn't know you could do it fully in character. I was playing um, World of Warcraft with some people who were quite dedicated in RPGers. And and uh, they showed me what it's like. They acted fully in character. But then they would go out of it, too, for my sake or other people's sake. And uh, But... You know, having a character and acting fully in character. I thought it was weird at the time, but I kind of liked it. And then I, I joined a guild some years later in uh, Warhammer Online. And it was a guild that was extremely dedicated to being in character. And whenever you weren't in character, you had to have the brackets when you're typing in guild chat or whatever person, uh, 
messaging between people or in general. But I uh, I play I was in that guild for like a, a year plus and I learned so much. That's where I really learned how to do it to be fully in character, have your whole background and act in character, have your own interests and you not always you don't always win everything. You just have to take it was a lot of drama in that guild, a lot of drama. <laughs> I think the guild master encouraged it. I remember it was we um it wasn't here where I am in Western Canada is Van I live in Vancouver so the guild master was in Canada it wasn't a Canadian guild most were Americans but the guild master was also Canadian but he was back east like in Ontario and they were having a thunderstorm there so we know we figured out something that he was doing because when his power went out you can see it in the in in the um the chat area there's like four or five people instantly logged off and. It was, he also had family members playing too, but not that many family members. And there's characters he was, I don't know how he was doing it. Maybe he was alt tabbing to play or he had different computers, but he was playing with other characters and, and kind of creating drama within the guild on purpose. So uh, it wasn't anything major that he was doing. It's more like how he set up the guild. It was a dark elf guild and there was houses, competing houses against each other. And... It, it was nasty at times. People died. Characters died. People left. You got upset and left the guild. And it was pretty hardcore stuff. And there was obviously a lot of. I think it really. I didn't really get involved in this, but there was a lot of. And I didn't know this till like way further into it. There's a lot of uh, other things going on behind the scenes between characters, male and female, <laughs> and sometimes male characters playing female characters with other male characters. So I didn't realize. <laughs> That was really happening. I actually found that really strange. Back in World War, uh, War, World of Warcraft, there was a guild I was in, and I remember talking to somebody. I was trying to bring him into my guild, and he's like, "No, so and so is in your guild." And that that woman, it was a woman too, real life, because you can hear her voice as we were talking <laughs> on microphones. She says she's into cybering, and she used to she used to send all these uh, texts to me, wrong texts to me, and it was meant obviously meant for the person that she was having these relations with, and she said, "I hate her." <laughs> That's what he told me. I'm like, what? It was the first time I ever heard of this. I didn't even know people were doing that in the game. So I talked to, uh, to other people in my guild, and they were just as surprised as me. So, yeah, stuff like that does happen. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I guess you could chalk that up to role playing, really in depth role playing. All right, let's go to the next person. Do we have Rolf Alfblad? Any chance of a Let's Role Play for Fallout 3 or New Vegas? It's actually a good question. Why it's a good question is because I am talking about what games I'm doing on my channel now with this uh, channel news. So, yes, in a few years' time, I think around 60% of Fallout 4 is done. Maybe more. Uh, still have the DLCs to go through. Uh, I forget what... Nuka World, and then Far Harbor. and But there's also is Vault 88. Actually, that, that will probably take a few videos to go through just on its own. That's in the southeast. That's where my character has been exploring lately. It's the last unex real unexplored area of the game. Uh, so I have to go through that. That was a DLC all on its own, where it's like an... Uh, I don't really want to ruin it for you. It's, it's different. Different and interesting. And the vault is not really that small. It's quite extensive. A lot of it's... Un most of it's unfinished. But, yeah, there's a lot of different areas you have to go through. You get a lot, of, a lot of little quests in that one. So, I assume two to three videos probably just for that one. Maybe. I could be wrong. It could be just one. I don't know. It's been years since I played through that. Yeah, and then, uh, so when Fallout 4 is done, I already said this, Fallout will be next. And then Fallout 2, Fallout 3, then lastly, Fallout New Vegas. So, Fallout New Vegas is the last one planned. Although, in the future, in the year 2032, when Fallout... Fallout, Fallout 5 comes out, then I will be working on that, if I'm still working on my channel at that point. Alright, uh, next question. As I said, I'm going in order of what it's listed here, so go Bills 999 What are your honest thoughts on Baldur's Gate 3? Interested or not so much? Really, really good question right now, actually. Well, go Bills at 2022. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3 looks like it's a lot of fun. I've... I have three layering games. I have not played any of them, not for one minute, not even loaded them up, actually. Uh, not that I have anything against Larian at all. I just haven't 
gotten into it, I haven't had. I would say that having not having the time is a lie because it, it would be because I've just decided to devote it to other things uh, instead of playing those games. I, I it's not that I'm not interested in. I am, and I I bought them for a reason. I, I will get into them at some point. Obviously, uh, Baldur's Gate three with my channel. Um, I have watched channels talk about all the drama around Baldur's Gate three. Now, when people usually say that about games, it's usually there's controversy because it's unfinished, there's bugs, there's problems, there's lies from the devs or something like that. But no, in this case, it's nothing to do with any of that. It's all because Baldur's Gate 3 has so much content, so much rich content. I think, did I write, I already, I already talked about this, I had 170 hours just of cutscenes. Just of cutscenes. Most games don't even get past 50 hours. <laughs> 170 hours just of cutscene uh, videos. You imagine how big this game is. We're, I, know, I know you're not going to go through all of that because a lot of it's d uh, different characters, different choices as you go. But still, even if you go through 20% of that, I mean, it's still over 30 hours of just cutscenes, which is nuts. <laughs> I've never heard of a game that does that in my life, ever. So the drama is not coming from the customers. It's coming from the other developers about this because... People, the customers are saying, well, all RPGs should be like this. And the, the other developers from other companies are like, oh, wait, 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 no, 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 no. No, no, this, they had all these years to develop this game. They had all this uh, money to do it, which in tr truth isn't not quite correct. They did have about six years to make Baldur's Gate 3. And I think about half of that or, or two, two plus years was early access. And that money helped. But they took their most of their problem. Oh, they had um, what what do you call that? Uh, the same thing they did with Pillars of Eternity, where they went and uh, raised money online. I forget what program that was, a GoFundMe type thing. Um, yeah, so they had that plus the money that they made from their other first two games, Larian games. I'm not sure how many games Larian has made in total, but as and I forget the other two games that I have, of course, on my channel. Well. You're not seeing what's on my channel, so I can go look right in Steam. What other games? Yeah, it's dark because you can't see the um, light coming off my Word program. Uh, where is it? I have not installed them. And I'm looking for them. I just don't have the room on my computer. Divinity Original Sin. I've got the Enhanced Edition and Divinity Original Sin 2. I have not played them. Get that light back. I've not played them. Uh, I have watched uh, Metal Canyon played through Divinity Original Sin. Was it one or two for a little bit? And he played a co-op. No, I think... I'm not sure about Baldur's Gate 3 being co-op. But I know Divinity Original Sin 1 and 2 was co-op. Or you can play single player. And I did see some of the game. I just have never played it. But it... It, I saw a lot of promise in it. It looked a lot of, like a lot of fun. Now, I've actually heard that Baldur's Gate 3 is really difficult, or it can be difficult. Maybe it's difficult in the lower levels. Some, I, I do know that it, uh, Dungeons and Dragons games, or whatever, Forgotten Realms types games, can be difficult in the lower levels because you have less his, hit points, less chance to hit, you don't really have that great of equipment, and it doesn't really kind of, I, I want to say compute, it doesn't really transfer over very well to other uh, NPCs or monsters that you're fighting because they are not exactly weak and beginning beginners either and you might not even have a full party it might be just a few of you you don't have your full party picked out and not everybody has all their skills so it can be I guess the first few hours can be very difficult that's what I've heard about Baldur's Gate 3 and there's also a lot of rolling a lot of d20 rolls so <laughs> this should be interesting and I said I was told that uh, you're going to you're going to lose a lot and just be prepared for it. It's not always going to go your way. But when it does go your way and, and it goes your way really well, you just you, you remember those moments. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this. The D20 deciding everything that happens, I don't know. Even in when I played pen and paper years back, I was never... I know we use D20s a lot. I played 3.5 and 4... Uh, we never, like we did, we went by the rules, but I don't remember D20s ruling every, like pretty much everything that happens. Like how, maybe it's just overhyped how much the D20 is in the game, but um, we'll see. So yeah, the other developers are saying, whoa, whoa, uh, uh, 
and they're trying to uh, make excuses for why Baldur's Gate 3 is so much richness in it. Uh, I don't think it's a buggy game. Every game comes with bugs, but I assume that it, it launched relatively bug-free. So, obviously there's going to be some here and there. But So I have not played it yet. I have I did install it when it was in early access. I had to uninstall it for space, and that's about it. So I've seen people review it. I've seen some clips of it. I saw the bear scene. <laughs> uh, it looks like a great game. <laughs> not because of the bear scene. But that's part of it. Looks like a great game. Uh, so yes, I am interested a lot. Uh, I just wish this game came out a few months later than it has. Just for my personal reasons and being selfish here, of course. Uh, because I'd like to take my time finishing Neverwinter Nights in preparation. But it came out, uh, what, the 20th, it's the 27th today, so 24 days ago. I think it was August 3rd it came out, fully, re fully released. And yeah, so it's going to come on my channel in September at some point. Ugh, as long as I get over being sick. <laughs> if, if not, it will eventually come. It'll come eventually. Okay, so last question. Alexander Collects 253. Do you play d and I assume you mean pen and paper. Uh, yes, I used to. Uh, originally, I was 12 when my babysitter, not so much for me, but for my five-year-old sister, uh, she showed me how to play Dungeons and Dragons. I don't remember what rule set it was. Probably just the very original one. We're talking late 80s. Uh, when would I have been 12? So 87, 88? Around that time? So grade 6, 7? Um, yeah, because my son is 12. He's going into grade 7. So yeah, grade 7. Do you, yeah, so I did I did play D&D, &D and she showed me the basics, and uh, I tried making my own. I made my own rule sets. I don't know, even know how I did it, I just based upon my experience. So I literally would write a whole things and make maps and try to get my friends to play. It didn't really go too well. I got a few friends to play <laughs> with me. And then probably around the age 15, 16, I, I maybe 16, yeah, because I was working uh, the summer, but we moved just literally the day before Halloween, I think we moved quite far away. So I uh, didn't really have that much time, but I bought all, all four original sets. They came in these boxes, and I remember like they had this artwork in the inside, and I, over the years, I colored them all in and because they were black and white. But yeah, so I, I really liked it. I just never had anybody to really play with it, but until fast forward 20 years, uh, with you know with the internet it was 2009 2008 2009 I was uh, started looking for D&D groups online and joined found a couple groups joined with them had a lot of fun and made some friends some of them came to the wedding our wedding in 2009 uh, we stopped in 2012 uh, I, one of the groups was done uh, the other two of the groups were done and one of my friends started up, he had a lot of experience that I met through the, the second group. He had a lot of experience with uh, Dungeon Dragons, so he ran his own group. We had, we played for probably a good two years, actually. Had a lot of people come and go over that time. I, I don't people moving and stuff like that. And then after that group kind of stopped, his his wife actually left him. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> Which is funny. It's not because of the D&D, &D, but... She was actually playing in it, so that was a core three of us, and we had two to sometimes three other people playing with us, so we would have five or six people at all times. Uh, yeah, his wife left him around 2014, and it really put a wrench in, in stuff. He, we tried to get a group going again, um, it just didn't work out, and yeah. So, and I also, my child, first child was born 2011. Then my second was born in 2014. It made it a little bit difficult for me to have that much time to do that much. Uh, a lot of what I did was, I mean, that was around the time I started my own channel too. So I was taking care of my boys and my health and then uh, working on my channel at that time. That was my life. Still is my life, actually. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, the, the, uh, if you didn't know, I also have a, a very bad spine injury from the end of 2009 so it's stopped me from doing physical labor like I used to be a painter 
and I have learned the hard way I can't do it anymore. I tried it this summer. We have to actually, we've, we're hiring somebody to come in and do it. it was, I did worked on the bathroom and I just about died doing it. My back is really, can't do it. I have a injury. I have like a fist sized dead zone of muscle tissue. My brain is turned off my lower right spine and uh, physical labor lifting and rolling the ceiling was really bad. Uh, it is too much. It's too much for me. It was a lot of pain. So, uh, hope that answers your questions. Other than that, actually, I have, you know, I've read Forgotten Realms books since I was 15. I still have my original one. I don't think you can see it. It's up higher. There's another level of the bookshelf, another shelf up where all my D&D books are. Uh, I can get it. I don't run over my cat with my chair. Where is it? Should be in order. What should be yelling at? I'm, I'm kind of looking just to. No, not this one. Here it is. I found it. Hopefully, it won't make my entire books collapse. This was, other than when I was 12, this is my introduction to DD, the literary universe. I think I was given this on a Christmas by my mom. Christmas present, among other Christmas presents, obviously. But yeah, I started reading it at age 15. I still have the original book. That book would be 32 years old now. Yeah, that was... Uh, that, that Obviously, for me, personally, that's kept D&D alive throughout all these years. I still I have like another 30 books literally up there. Most of them about Dritt Stewart and Forgotten Realms. This is at the top from the publishers of the Dragonlance Saga, so it must have been new trying to advertise. I do have a Dragonlance book. I, it was f far into the series, I, so I've always been lost whenever I tried reading it, and I just never bothered to or, uh, order all the original books for it, the, uh, the books before it. So I do, I'm into Forgotten Realms. I like it very much. So, And other than that, I played a lot of other D&D &D games since I was a kid. I remember all the gold box games that I played. So I'm quite familiar with D&D. &D. Alright, so I guess we'll end it here. Uh, if you would like to help out and support Let's Roleplay, you can donate at my Patreon account or become a member of my channel, which also comes with perks. Just click on the Join video to watch what I put together and what you as a member would get. Speaking of patrons, Patreon actually gives me 80% of the money given, whereas YouTube gives me 70%. However, you do get the perks with YouTube. Everyone who donates to me on Patreon are also getting their names posted as supporters at the end of my videos. And as well with PayPal, if you donate anything, they give 90% of the money to me and the links for these are in my banner on the bottom right side so one thing i want to say right before i end it is that my channel is not getting enough uh not getting enough views <laughs> every channel will say that not getting enough thumbs up for the videos especially never winter nights there's one two videos where i was i gave it the thumbs up just to save some face so, and that was the last two videos. I looked back and I think somebody's put one in the most recent one. So there's two in the most recent one. But come on, guys. If you're watching my videos, thumbs up. It helps me against the algorithm. helps for my channel to grow. Even if you give it a thumbs down, it still helps. It's player interactivity. They really like comments as well. Leave comments. I get a lot of comments from people, you know, asking great things or talking about great things. All the way to people saying that I don't want trolling questions, of course. I'll delete the, the thing, the comment if it's a trolling trolling comment but um yeah so if you actually have a valid criticism of course i'm willing to hear that i've had people criticize my work uh try to be nice about it but yes i take i take all feedback from my uh viewers quite seriously i mean in my last uh skyrim video that i did somebody said i agree with your views you just left out this part and i i you know, for the intro blurb that I did. And I agree with you. That actually, I'm going to have to add that in a future video. I do take you what you guys say seriously that, you know, this could have been done or that could have been done. Or did you, if you see it from this point of view, just don't be a jerk about it. And I actually don't get many trolling posts. Like I, I probably get one every three, four months at, at most. Uh, it's very rare. It used to happen a lot more before I, when I stopped between 2016 and 2020 it used to be a lot more trolling comments but it's not as many anymore for some reason 
All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I hope to see your comments and your thumbs ups, even some thumbs downs. If you don't like it, don't be afraid. It all helps my channel. I don't take it personally. I would prefer them to be thumbs ups, but <laughs> be honest about it and interact with my channel. It all helps it in the algorithm. So thanks for watching my videos, and we'll see you again.